Hello, this is Warlord. What we're going to do today is create a simple scene because I keep getting emails from first time iPhone users on where to get started. So we'll use some default assets, a couple of characters, some point and click movement, and we'll show you how to do your very first simple scene in iCloud. Let's get started. Now there's several ways to navigate. Uh, you have the drop down tools, you have keyboard shortcuts, but in this case I'm going to go ahead and use the tabs so that you can follow along a little easier about what I'm doing. So first let's go ahead and go to set, terrain, and under mesh medium let's pick up the community stage. Now let's go to sky and let's use universal. You can actually pick any sky that you want. Now we've got that set up, let's go into props and let's select our Jeep. You can double click or you can drag them into the scene. Now that we've got the Jeep, let's go ahead and position it. Now when it comes to positioning, you can control Q to turn the gizmos, standard 3D gizmos on and off, or control Q again just to move it with your mouse without having to grab the gizmo. Now let's go get our actors. We're going to go ahead and use G5 Chuck and G5 Gwen. And what we're going to do is make it seem like they've had a conversation and that the, she's going to get in the Jeep and he's going to walk off the other direction. So I'm going to turn them towards each other. And the first thing I want to do also is preserve this shot. So I'm going to click on preview camera because that's the camera we're on. I'm going to hit add. And just to keep it easy, I'm going to come over here and rename that to front. So I know that that is the front shot. Now we can even go so far as to select each avatar and we can pick a target and have them look at each other. But for right now, we're not going to need that for what we're going to do today. So as I said earlier, we're going to have Gwen get into the vehicle and we're going to have Chuck walk off in this direction. Now this Jeep is not a standard prop. It's an iProp, which means it's an interactive vehicle. It is scripted to interact with these characters. So what you do is select the character, then select the iProp, in this case the Jeep, go to Operate, and Driver Get In. And let it run until she completes the animation. Okay, now that's finished. Now we select Chuck. Now Chuck has a persona built in, just like Gwen does. And personas have scripts that go with them. You'll notice he has a move and a walk forward, and he has some perform commands. Now you can also go to persona, and we could load up the G3 Dylan persona. And that changes things. He has move with a walk and a run, plus different perform commands. So it depends on which persona is loaded. So let's go ahead and load the G5 Chuck persona back. And then we're going to right click on him, go to move, walk forward. Now we're going to click on a place in the distance for him to walk to. Now this may take some getting used to as far as getting oriented to where you want him to walk. And be sure and let them go ahead and walk out until it's finished. Now that we have the basic motions down, we need to time them a little better. We just stopped where we were at and let Chuck start walking at that point. Actually, we could have come back to the first of the timeline and let Chuck walk. But I wanted to show you how to time this if you needed to. So what we do is open up the timeline. And we're going to select both, Chuck and Gwen. And we're going to go ahead and click on the object related track to open them both up. Now we don't need the project file here so you can close it out if it gets in your way. What we want to do is look at the motion on both of these. If we needed to time something between these this tells us where that motion is. And these little handles right here are your blend handles. Later on you'll discover that when you're putting two motions together this helps blend the two motions and things. What we want him to do is actually start walking at the same time she does. So for right now, we'll just grab it and we'll move it all the way forward. 
Let's see what that does. Now that's good, but it's a little too good, a little too perfect. Let's pull it back just a little. And that way at least they're not exactly starting at the same time. Now we can stretch that blend handle a little here. And kind of slow down his turn to where it's not exactly the same speed as the other one. So what we have accomplished so far is we've animated them to walk off in different directions and do different things. Now since this Jeep is an iProp, it will also drive off. So let's go ahead and do that. And we don't want to lose our front position here as far as view. So let's go ahead and switch to our preview camera. And then we can move it around and not have to worry about losing our shot. So what we're going to do here is move it to where we can at least see enough that once she gets in the car, we can click and tell it where to go. Now let's move it up to the appropriate place. Somewhere in there. However much time you want to give her to do this is up to you. You may want to add in some car starting sounds and things like that in your editor later. So let's click on the Jeep once we find where we want to be on our timeline. Let's go to move and move forward. And let's click over here. Now the wheels may turn a little radical and it may not go exactly where you want to go. You may have to do this a couple of times. And that's not that difficult. You just control Z to undo, but you have to make sure that you go back to your timing, to where you wanted her to actually take off. Right click, move forward. And the wheels do get a little radical there. There's not much we can do about that. So what we have so far is our combined motion of them walking away from each other, her getting in, and then driving off while he continues to walk. Now you can use camera angle to not show uh, these wheels, and that's how you'd probably solve that little problem. Now let's take a look at adding some more cameras. We're not going to worry so much about following rules or blocking shots. I'm just going to show you the mechanics of how cameras work. Okay, when we click on a character, you're going to find in most cases three follow cams. There may not always be a face cam, but there will usually be an actor cam and a bird cam. Okay, the actor cam, the bird cam, and the face cam. Now each of these cameras can be manipulated once you select it. But the problem with that is, if you spend a lot of time getting a shot, as soon as you switch off of it, you lose that shot. You lose that camera. So, in order to preserve this, you'll want to select it, and once again, you'll want to add. And then let's go down to camera, and let's just rename that Chuck. Now let's go ahead and select Gwen, face cam. Again, we're not going to worry about keeping the conversation on the same side. I'm just going to show you the mechanics. Set your shot like you want, then add your camera. And you can see where if you don't rename, it can get kind of confusing after a while. So now we have at least three cameras. The front view, Chuck's camera, and Gwen's camera. Now we could go ahead and record out this scene, render out the scene with each camera, and then use an editor put them together but there's a camera switch built in so let's go ahead and use that so we can utilize all these cameras and switch back and forth between them so we're going to show the timeline and right now we don't necessarily need everything on we just need the project on so we'll shut those off here's your camera switcher we're going to come to the beginning of it right click the bottom is camera list and I'm going to go to front. I'm going to move down just a little bit. Right click, camera list, Chuck. Now this would be whatever order you think they should be. I'm just arbitrarily putting these somewhere to start with. Right click, Gwen. Now I'm going to show you a neat little trick. We First off we have to go up here and pick camera switches or view camera. And everything works out. But you'll notice right here 
our very first keyframe wasn't all the way back. If we had been on a different view, then this would have jumped from whatever view we were on to this camera. So after you select your first uh, camera within the switcher, be sure you're all the way back to the beginning. Pull it all the way back. That way you won't have a jump. In this case, we were on the same camera, so it didn't cause the jump. Now let's see what happens here. Now it switches, nothing's there. Now it switches, nothing's there. That's because we did not tell each camera to actually track the people we wanted it to track. So let's go back to the Chuck camera. And if we want to, we can go up here to the Chuck camera so we can see exactly what we're working with. And we want to link to him. So here's another interesting thing. If you link to a bone, it will inherit the movement. You may want that in some cases. That's a bit radical for here. So if you don't want it to inherit the movement, always move it to the bone root. Then you'll get a lot smoother camera movement. So now we have Chuck's camera set up. Let's go ahead and go to Gwen. And let's link it. And remember to link it to the root. Okay, now her camera is set up. Except that her camera is not exactly in what I would call the best of positions. So let's click on her to make her the pivot point. This is another thing. If you click on something else and try to move, this thing may swing way out of line. Click on something that's in your scene, and that will be your pivot point when you go to move that camera. So let's try... Let's try something like this. Still not quite what I'm looking for. I don't think we want it to actually run into Chuck. So as you can see, this can get a little time consuming just picking your best camera shot. So let's go back to our camera switch and let's see what we have now. Okay, there it switches to Chuck. There it switches to her. And that's great, except for one thing. I don't think we want to actually show that because of some of the problems the iProps can give. So what we want to do here is let's see what happens when we come back and we go back to the front view. Now the problem here is, is you're going to see, actually see the tires. So I think it's time to probably set up another camera because this front view is not working. So let's go to preview camera to bring it in close. And you can set this up however you wish. I'm going to do it kind of like this. That's the shot I want to maintain. So I'm going to add yet another camera. I'm going to call that Jeep. You can call it whatever you need to. You can call it wide, uh, medium, however you want to describe it. Things. There's our Jeep camera. Now remember, we can all we can set it to view it to just follow it, but that's not what we want to do. We actually want to link it. So now we have it linked. Go to camera switch, and let's see what happens. Definitely got to time it better. Oh, well, we didn't, didn't actually tell it to use the new camera, did we? Did I? Jeep. Now let's see what happens. Now again, we have a little bit of problem here with Gwen jumping back and forth. So we could go back and change our camera angle to not show that. So there are ways to solve that problem. 
You could also come from the side, just about anywhere you want to go. However, I will say that iProps is things like the Jeep are not used very often because as you see, it is difficult to get different characters to actually work with these things. There's a lot more to it than just point and click. Now, let's say that we didn't like our initial scene. We don't like the way this looks right here, this particular framing. We don't have to go back to that camera because the camera switches on it. We can go ahead and change it from here. Just remember to select a character to move off of. Otherwise, you'll get a different pivot point. So it has to be something that's in this scene. If you were to click something else entirely, like nothing there, you'll see how it pivots. So remember, always pick something in your scene to pivot around and move around. Now let's see what we have. And there you have it. It's not a very complicated scene, but it shows you a lot of ways to interact with iClone. And this is just using a few tools. Don't let the interface fool you. One great thing about iClone is you only have to use the tools that you need. And they have actually done a great job of keeping many of these tools in front of you. Because one thing about complicated software is out of sight, out of mind. So sometimes trying to keep as much in front of you as possible helps that you remember there are these tools available. Anyway, Hope now you can make your first scene. Thanks for watching.